two, we've done three, now we're doing more than three. So uh, let's just go over a bit uh, some of the complications that we saw last time. And uh, then we'll go on. You, I gather, are all familiar with, with the Bryce family by now? You've gotten recommendations on the blog, Zal, um, that uh, it's an easier read. Uh, I've also noticed that uh, people are having trouble with Lynn Hoffman. Now, one of the reasons for these lectures is to make Lynn Hoffman readable. It's not an easy book. It never was. Uh, but hopefully, we're taking the essence of each chapter. But that doesn't replace the reading. It doesn't mean that you'll do a wonderful job reading and understanding everything before the classes. But after the classes, uh, I think it's very important to feel the name of the book is Foundations of Family Therapy. I want you people to feel that you have a foundation. If you don't have a foundation, you're always going to be feeling like somebody told me to do this, and somebody told me to do that, so I moved the chair and it is. But you won't think pieces are. All you can do is swallow somebody else's puzzle, and it won't work. And since you're the, uh, uh, the, you're the vanguard, you're the first class that's taken on themselves to learn family therapy and essentially to create family therapy for your community, that's why I'm nooching you. That it's important not just to know what I said in the class, the pieces of the puzzle are in the book. It's in the Hoffman. Those are the pieces of the puzzle. The lectures are meant to help you to understand the pieces in, a, in an easier way, but the pieces are there. The more you have a foundation, the happier you'll be in the end. You won't be happy this year, but you'll be happier in the end the more that you work on it. So let's go over uh, the Bryce family. The Bryce family is easy, right? The, the, you can understand every word in the book. It's very impressive. But you won't meet the Bryce family. You'll meet the, the Horowitz family. And the Horowitz family is going to be three times the size of the Bryce family, lives in a different culture, speaks in a different language. And uh, God help you if you try to wrestle with one of the kids on the floor with the Horowitz family. You're going to have to do something else. So. Uh, so this is, these are the Bryce's, but keep in mind the other families. So you remember them, David and Caroline, Claudia, Don and Laura. Everybody remember these folks? Now, uh, what we want to do is take the notions uh, of what's called structural family therapy and uh, learn those pieces through the Bryce family. Now, um, Structural family therapy was a, it's half, a, half an Israeli creation and half not. The person who created structural family therapy is a child psychiatrist by the name of Sal Mnuchin. Uh, and Mnuchin was here in Israel in the early 50s. He came from Argentina. He uh, worked, he was a trainee at the Lasker Clinic. The Lasker Clinic was in Yerushalayim. And it was probably one of the uh, leading child, child, it wasn't yet family, but child clinics in the world. Uh, it took peace pe the best people from all over, like Israel did in the early 50s. Uh, one of the people who was the advisors was Manuel and Eric Erickson, and Gerald Kaplan was the director of it, and uh, Sal Mnuchin was a trainee. Those of you who know the history of Israel in the early 50s, a lot of brilliant people came here and then looked around at the economy of the early 50s and said Gewalt and went elsewhere, and Sal Mnuchin was one of them. He kept a relationship with Israel, and everything he learned about families, he learned not, not in Bnei Brak and not in Mea Sharim, he learned it in the Kibbutzim. So his theory is about the Kibbutzim. Now, um, structural family therapy has no theory of its own. And you'll see as we go over it, uh, that it looks easy to learn because it's in some ways as a theory, it's a fake. What it is, is it's an import from somebody else's theory. And you know, you all know that when you take from Yenem and put it over here, it doesn't always work. And in this case, there was something that was called general systems theory. General systems theory was a creation of biology, and it was an understanding about organic systems, and it was created by somebody whose name you will forget as fast as I can say it, um, von Bertolanffy. Von Bertolanffy created a, a general systems theory about uh, bio biological systems. You may want to know that the word general systems theory means what we cannot create. In other words, uh, uh, all physicists were working since Einstein on trying to create what they call the general systems theory. And they had lots of uh, ways of proving that it couldn't be done. In other words, physicists, they with the pieces of the puzzle, they know you can't put together the pieces of the puzzle. 
in biological systems, people are less rigorous. And so von Gerd Lenfrey tried to create what he called the general systems theory. Mnuchin was talking with a puzzle with more than three pieces. So he called his a family systems theory or a structural theory. And uh, it has three pieces, but it's very important to understand the pieces because Mnuchin became dominant in Israel. And there's an overuse of Mnuchin's theory to the uh, detriment of other theories. Mnuchin's is the easiest to learn. So it's a good place to start. It's not a good place to finish. But this is a good place to start. There are three major notions in, the, in, in Mnuchin's theory. The first is one called hierarchy. Uh, hierarchy is a Greek word for um, the, the uh, privileges of the Kohen. Archi, in, in this case, means uh, uh, first rights or origins, and Heros is, uh, is a priest. So hierarchy is uh, basically authority. And uh, if you look at the notion of hierarchy, so it's pretty easy to see in the, um, uh, in the Bryce family that there ought to be a hierarchical mind, shouldn't there be, right? In other words, you have two parents, David and Caroline, and the kids, they're all pretty close in age, so the kids are under the hierarchical mind. Now, what does the word hierarchy mean um, in families? There's a very famous book that you'll hear about a lot in Israel. I don't know if it was, I think it was translated into English. It was originally in Hebrew called The, um, uh, the Rehabilitation of Parental Authority. Have you heard of it? There's an Israeli named Chaim Omer who took this limited theory and schlepped it into something else and made sort of a mess. Um, and so what you'll hear in Israel, in Israeli discourse, not necessarily in America, is that all problems in the family are because of lack of discipline, lack of, lack of authority. And so Israeli parents are being told that they don't use authority enough and they should become more authoritative. Authoritative as opposed to authoritarian. In other words, it has to serve a certain function but uh, that parents have to have a certain authority. Now, uh, in Mnuchin's word, the notion of hierarchy was misunderstood, including by Chaim Omer, as a kind of uh, uh, one-sided issue. In other words, if I have authority over you, then it's one, one unidirectional. I have authority over you, right? And so I have to assert my authority, and you have to accept my authority. Does that sound right to anybody? Authority is something that happens between people, right? So it has to be co-created. The authority that the parents have over the children has to function in a way that helps the children to grow. Authority isn't by itself a good or a bad. It can be useful. Now, why is authority an important of the hierarchy? Why is it important in families? Do you remember we talked about the, um, the perverse triangle and the, the fact that the children need to have parents, because the thing that scares children most is to be in the hands of children. But if you go into a fifth grade class, you know, and you say, one teacher, 30 kids, that's it. it's like, you know, why isn't there a revolution? What's going on here? You know, they can overpower the, the, the but children know that left to their own devices, they can't grow. That they need to have somebody who says, I know better than you. Hopefully, he does know better than you. If he's acting like a child, we have a problem. But hopefully, the adult knows better. And children up until adolescence require believing that somebody knows better. It makes them feel secure. So they give authority to the parents just as much as the parents take authority. And so as a result, uh, when you say hierarchy, what you mean is the kind of hierarchy that suits development, that lets people continue to develop. It's not an absolute good. If there's too much authority, then uh, um, kids can't grow. If there's too little authority, kids can't grow. How much is the right amount of authority? Here's an interesting question. Mnuchin thought he had the answers. We'll see it when we get to the area of uh, boundaries. Mnuchin tried to say that there's a way to gauge a family based on uh, uh, how much, uh, in this case, how much hierarchy there should be. That is not true. It can't be true. And when the women uh, in the 90s in America took a look, uh, took a look at family therapy, they said uh, to Mnuchin, um, we think you have a problem here. What, what is your problem? 
that how do you know how much hierarchy is necessary? How do you know that for another family? What makes you know that this much authority is good and that much authority is good? And they said to him, you're talking like a man. You're, excuse me, on the right side. They said, you're talking like a man. That's what men do. They think that they know the answer instead of searching, taking a question and searching for how it works. And so that's most of what the feminist revolution was about. If you think about it, you know, men have also been saying that in certain cultures like ours for many, many years, that, you know, authority is something that there's only one authority, right? The rest has to work in making things uh, better in society and the families. There's only one authority. The rest is uh, uh, derivative. So, um, so they said to Mnuchin, you are opposing the authority that works in your family and in your culture on somebody else's family and somebody else's culture. That is what's known as chauvinism, right? That you know the answer before you ask the question. That, so Mnuchin did very poorly in the feminist critique of family therapy in the, uh, in the 90s. And part of it was because of this idea that you could know the answer. So when you say to yourself, OK, we have this family, and we have a bit of a balagan here, and uh, are, are the parents using authority, what would you say, well? What is well? You would say, is there a way in which authority services the growth of this family? Authority is not, or hierarchy is not an absolute. It's derivative. It's meant to make something happen and happen well. And you'll see a broad range. You'll see families where you know, the father raises his eyebrows and everybody shuts up. And you say to yourself, that's too much authority. Well, first look around at the family. If that works fine in the family, in other words, if the, the kids grow well, stopping in the middle of whatever is happening when they see their father's eyebrow go up, but it works and everybody makes it work, just remember that if it's working, everybody's making it work, not just the father. He's not imposing his authority, it's just an eyebrow, right? He's not imposing his authority. He and the children are making authority work, right? And in another family, the father will have to say things twice, ask his wife why they're not listening, and she'll say, because you're talking in a way that nobody can understand and it's corrected, and then the children will pull together. And you say, so, well, that's not enough authority, right? Well, it might not be enough authority in your house, but in this particular culture, this particular family, if it works, then it works, okay? So the point is that these notions are derivative notions that meant to make something work. What has to work, we'll get to in a second. That means it works, but it doesn't work. Ah, we're about to get to that. Oh. Yeah, I was hoping you were gonna ask, right. So hierarchy is, uh, now in hierarchical lines, there are divisions to some extent between siblings as well. I mean, there's an obvious line between the parents and the children, but think about your own families. When there's a difference of about five years or more between children, uh, which means that the first child is in a diff different developmental stage than the second child. Or if you want to translate it, you can say, the first child knows more about how to get along in the world than the younger child because he has more experience. So a lot of times in large families, you'll see that you know, the hierarchy is divided. Sometimes it'll be older children and younger children. Sometimes it'll be um, an older child who becomes sort of a sub-parent. And you say, uh, OK, there could be hierarchical lines. In uh, the Bryce family, I don't think we saw them. I don't think Claudia had authority over Don or, or Laura. It's an American family where that tends to be understated. And you could say, wait a minute, it should, should be there. But you don't, wouldn't say that now, after we've gone through the critique. You would say, well, how does it work? And then you ask a question, well, what's work? So uh, the important part about what's working is what's called the subsystems. That's the second uh, major theory, major notion in Mnuchin. A subsystem is a group of people who have a function. It's not a group of people. It's a group of people who have a certain function. As a result, for example, you'll see that David and Caroline, the same two people, share that, that those two people have two subsystems. They have a subsystem, what's called the spouse subsystem, which has to do with the love between a man and a woman. And they have a parental, Mnuchin called it an executive subsystem, which means how they think about raising their kids. Right? Now, those are two different functions, aren't they? How you love your wife, about her love, the wife loves her husband, and how they raise their children can be divided as separate functions. And so when we talk about subsystems, we say, well, there's two people in the 
spouse subsystem, and there's two people in the uh, parental subsystem. Now, in many, many, many families, there's more than two parents in the parental subsystem. You know, Mnuchin was working on Western small nuclear families. Um, when one took Mnuchin's theory and brought it to the uh, Puerto, Rican, Puerto Rican community in New York, you saw that the parental subsystem, the executive subsystem, was a mother and her mother. That was the uh, executive system. And uh, then the first question would be, does it work? Which we'll get to in a minute, right? And the spouse subsystem may not have been uh, very, very present. It may have been just a woman or a woman with uh, men that don't necessarily stay very long. And so the spouse system is very separate. But it's not necess necessary that the parental system have only two people in it. The spouse system, when it has more than two people in it, becomes very problematic because spousing has to do with uh, a, 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 um, a limited function between two people. But the parental function, and you'll see it, for example, in our neighbor's community, in the Palestinian Arab community, the older brother always has an executive function. All of the younger brothers always listen to the older brother. And that, that has to do with hierarchy, but in the parental system, a father will ask his older brother what he thinks before he'll make a decision about his uh, child. And if something happens to the older brother, the whole executive system gets rocked. Whereas in other systems, you say, an older brother? Who, who, whoever asks about the uncles? What are we doing here, right? So it depends on the culture. And then, one of the questions that you are already asking yourselves, and we might uh, hear about today, is uh, in different uh, uh, traditional Jewish uh, uh, families, perhaps Hasidic somewhat different from Litvish, and perhaps Northern Europe somewhat different from Southern Europe, Yek is different from everybody. Uh, <clears throat> what, who, who makes executive decisions? How much are older siblings of the parents or grandparents, how much are they involved in, uh, in the uh, parental subsystem? It's a fact. You have to see what the fact is in a given culture. So those are two subsystems, and then there's a sibling subsystem, and in a large family there'll often be more than one sibling subsystem. There may be three sets or four sets, depending on the ages, depending on who went to school together, depending on all sorts of things, you know, who went to grandma and who went to the aunt, and however it got divided, there may be uh, different subsystems. And then the whole family itself is what's called, a, a, that's a nuclear family. And there also, the nuclear family um, may include other people that in the American nuclear family, which is just two parents and a child, and the children, uh, may include other people. Because if grandma is living in the home and helping to raise the kids, so she's a member of the uh, nuclear family, and, uh, uh, and, and so forth. Now, um, that brings us to uh, to Razi's question, which is, um, work. what does it mean by working? You see, a subsystem has functions. Right? The function of a subsystem would be, um, a, of a sibling subsystem would be what? What would you say is the function of a sibling subsystem? Supporting each other. Okay, so one of them is supporting each other, that you get support from your peers from your siblings that you don't get in any other way because somebody's seeing the world pretty close to how you're seeing it, being raised. That's why I keep telling you that the people you're going to learn from so much in this subsystem of the colleagues who keep resisting the blog, but it'll come back, um, that that's a different subsystem. I can't teach you what you can learn from each other. That's something different. Uh, okay, so support, what else? Yeah. I also think like modeling society. Sorry? Modeling what, how they're going to go out into society and have relationships with other people. Right. In other words, how you're going to get along with peers isn't how you get along with your parents. It's how you get along with siblings. So learning about relationships, learning about the parallel relationships, right? Yeah. Companionship. Like Sorry? Companionship. Companionship. That's different. different function from... Uh, from support. It's part of it, but it's a different function. Companionship, if you're lonely, right? Uh, um, one might say that Claudia was awfully lonely in the Bryce family. Um, uh, but companionship is an important part of being, co companionship and connection, right? A sense of being part of a group. That's one of, the, those are the um, functions of the sibling subsystem. A sense of belonging. 
a sense of belonging, connection. Right. Now, um, you see, if you look at David and Caroline, and you say, well, wait a minute, they belong to two subsystems. So what on earth would be the boundary between the parental subsystem and the uh, executive subsystem if it's the same two people? A boundary is not around people. A boundary is around functions. Around functions. It's around subsystems, not around people. Now, what is a, bound a functional boundary? Well, uh, David and Caroline have a subsystem that has to function, the spouse subsystem. What's supposed to function there? There's some things about companionship and belonging, and there's also, there's also intimate relations. So that belongs in the spouse subsystem, doesn't it? And the parental subsystem has to do with talking about who your children are and how they're growing up, and how to make decisions about discipline, about support, about where you want to live, about where they go to school. Those are not spouse subsystem functions. Their parental subsystem functions. So, what would the boundary be between those two, uh, between those two functions? What would it look like if uh, um, father says to the wife, um, "If you don't go to mikvah, I'm not talking to you about the kids." So then you have uh, a, a loss of boundary, a loss of separation between those two functions. You have the sexual uh, intimate issue uh, uh, intruding into the executive issue something that happens not uncommonly in, 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 in families. So if there's dissatisfaction in the spouse system, it goes into the parental well. If Claudia said that or David said that? Was that Carol? Yeah, you're, you're right to say Claudia because as we get to it. You said Claudia. Do you mean Claudia or David? Da I said David and Caroline. Right, David, did I say Claudia? Yeah. No, ah, <laughs> and only, you only, you're the only one who, uh, okay, so we have a subsystem function here that's not working, because when I make a mistake, you know, that'll happen. Uh, I want to hear it from everybody, right? Because I, otherwise I keep making it, and then you're not helping me. So we have a co-creation problem, which is that you have a somewhat challenged uh, uh, lecturer here, and who will here and there slip, and uh, sometimes I'll do it on purpose. Uh. <laughs> So, so you have to guess when. But we have a function in common, which is trying to keep us on track, which we have to work together. Are you saying that, I mean, it seems kind of obvious to me, but you're saying that you have to keep the intimate relations separate from what you talk about about the children, the parental. Right. See, it's in uh, there. You're, you're putting it exactly in the terms that I wanted you to put it so I could say no. Because uh, what does it mean that I think that they should be separate? The issue is the function, right? In other words, if the way that the parents talk to each other, they're able to sustain the spouse subsystem and make it work, and to uh, uh, have the parental subsystem working. See, what you'll see in the room, as an example, is uh, um, that parents will come in and they'll start to talk, just the parents, right? And, uh, uh, and the, the father will say to the mother, it's not an uncommon example, when I feel lonely, and unsupported by you, I don't feel like talking about the children. Right? Red light goes on, minutian, foul, you're supposed, but, but wait, wait, wait a minute. And she says to him, listen, um, it works for care for me. When you help me with the children, I feel closer to you. So how about if we try to talk about the school, because they're throwing Itzik out, not you, <laughs> out of school tomorrow, so we have to uh, uh, we have to make a decision, and then when I know that I'm comfortable with the parental subsystem function, in other words, when I feel like I'm functioning as a mother, then I feel free to, uh, to be your companion. And he says, okay, I didn't get that. So now what has happened? See, if you were Venusian, you would jump on them and say, foul, you're not allowed to do that. But what we're doing is we're looking at the boundary and see if it works. Now, how do boundaries work? Boundaries work when people make them work. So the boundary is supposed to support the function, right? What defines a, a structure of a family is not whether the boundary is too little or too much. See, if, if you had an intrusion of one subsystem and another, so Manusha would say that's an enmeshed family because the boundaries between the subsystems are uh, too porous, they're too open, right? Uh, um, and, uh, um, and the women would say to him, and did say to him, how do you know that that's too porous? Too porous for who? For a Jewish family that came from, they're too open. Too, too, uh, 
to uh, it, that's the, it's it's like not having Trump's wall, you know. It, there's no wall. There's no uh, there's no separation. But how do you know what a separation is? So what I'm suggesting is that you only know when you watch how the system works on its boundaries. The, system, the boundaries are a living thing, and the boundary is not absolute, and you can't judge somebody else's boundary, but you can judge, is it working, right? So if, in other words, the woman said, uh, what I just said before, I said, look, let's talk about you know, our kids, and then we'll have time for a cup of tea and whatever else, and he says, I, no, I'm never gonna do that. You've always done that, and that's what my mother did, and that's what her grandma did, and uh, that's, that's not acceptable to me. And she said, well, that's not acceptable to me. So then we have something that's not working, right? In other words, here, the two subsystems are, have, have intruded upon each other and broken down the functions of both of the subsystems. The spouse system's not working and the parental system is, subsystem's not working. So then we say, for this family, those boundaries need some help. If we could help them, and that's what family therapists would do, is say, I'll tell you what, let's spend 10 minutes doing <coughs> one, and ten then is doing the other, and uh, um, if the two of you can't decide which comes first, let me decide, just so we get started, and then we'll do one, and then and so you start to work on separating the boundaries, but you're not creating it. Who's going to create it in the end? They are, right? In other words, when you when you create a structure in the room, you're not really correcting the family's sub uh, structure. You're not creating the boundary for them. You're putting like a dotted line. This is how it might work. 15 minutes on one, and then 15 minutes the other, and you just keep going back. You try that, and then what do they do? They say, uh, you know what? We can solve it without you. And they'll do something better than what you can suggest. Does that mean your suggestion wasn't good? It means the suggestion was useful, that you thought about how a boundary might work. But in families, the boundaries are really uh, much more organic than that, so they, they created themselves. So far, are you with me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a case where enmeshment is like culturally the thing and it's working, is yeah. it fine? Or um, like I'm thinking maybe I, I don't know much about the Hasidic world, but I'm thinking like I know it's they're very close and the families come together and they're always I I don't know I, I that's what I was just thinking of. In, in which world? Like the Hasidic. Ah. Okay. Like, is it, can it be something that's normal if it's culturally? Okay. So, so that's exactly, you're exactly at the point that, that I want to talk about. Families are not normal or not normal. If you look for a normal family, you have to have a theory of normal. There is no theory of normal. There are theories of function, but there are no theories of normal. There's not a theory of normal for individuals, let alone for families. There's too many pieces, you know, mathematically, just, you know, take too many, uh, um, too many uh, different facts, and you can't solve that equation. So, looking for the normal family, um, put it this way, you'll be looking for a long time. But you will see families that function more or less well, and whose function can be improved when you think along these lines. See, these lines are useful. So you see a Hasidic family, you say to yourself, Duvald, in my family, people would never, you know, uh, sit and sing for three hours. Mah. Right? But, uh, but I'm a bit caught. What do I know from that? But uh, then I said to myself, well, is there companionship among the children? Is there a sense of connection? Do the spouse, does the spouse system work? Now, let's say you say, well, spouse system, what spouse system? The father says, and, the mother, and everybody jumps, and the mother has nothing to say about it. Does it work? Right? So the issue of uh, authority is how everybody treats authority. If the mother wants the authority to be in the hands of the father, she says, that's good, I'm busy with other stuff. And it works for her, she likes his authority. And the children know that she likes and agrees with his authority. So why would you say that's not a good way to do it? They have to sit and daven about it like, uh, like an Upper East Side, the New York family. They don't have to, does it work? In other words, do the, do the children feel safe with that authority? Is that the authority that works for them in, in helping them to, to grow? And is that the authority that for the, for the executive system, the executive system is tilted, but it works. He says, uh, and she says, okay. He says, uh, she says, okay. If it works, in other words, if the children aren't saying, you know you never listen to mom, or I never hear mom and I need to hear what she says, so then it's not working. But if they say, oh, thank God in our family, 
uh, it works fine. And the truth is that mom actually is busy with other things, so they divided the work. So we don't need Mnuchin to tell us if it's good or bad, but you can ask the question. But the question is the function in the subsystems. That's the function. And the boundaries are what protects the, um, the, the function in the subsystem. So a boundary is a useful boundary, is a functional boundary, when the subsystems are working. You don't look at are the boundaries good or bad. You look at the, the functions in the subsystem and are they protected enough by the, uh, uh, by the boundaries? Love it. From a multi-generational perspective, yeah. um, you can see a family that may be working, and you may question, well, the mother seems to be okay with the father having authority, and it may be coming from you know, her being in a place where she was never allowed to exert herself in any way, and end up limiting her down the line. Right, so, so that, that is a useful question. So you would say, well, the aura, the executive system seems to be working, but there were more than that systems. In other words, each person is also a system. Mnuchin had the absurd uh, term holon, which I hope you'll never use, uh, but it's a person, right? In other words, every person is also a system. So what David is suggesting is if the woman is unhappy with that, right? See, I said she's happy with it. So she herself doesn't feel that she's uh, uh, being dominated, she feels like she's uh, being free to do other things, and she's happy with, uh, with her part, which is an agreeing part, passive part of the authority. If she's not happy with that, then the likelihood is, because we're dealing with families, people are exquisitely sensitive to each other's unhappiness. That's what defines a family how sensitive you are to each other's unhappiness. So, um, uh, at least clinically, that's what we need to So if, if she's unhappy with it, at least one of her daughters is going to be unhappy with it, and maybe some of her sons. In other words, there's going to be noise there, because it's not working. It, it's, it, one subsystem is working, but another subsystem <coughs> is not functioning. If she's doing that only because I, ha I have to do it, because that's how my grandmother did it, uh, but I don't feel right about it, then it's not, not functioning, right? Yeah. So let's say That's a very good question. So let's say it's functioning and it works. So outside it looks very nice, but each one of the children are not going to develop. If, if every time the father just um, raises his eyebrows, like you said, and everyone's listening, what about the personal development of each of the children? Like, and and that is, does, does that mean it works or it doesn't work? I mean, it might be a nice family from the outside, but what is working as every individual person is developing? Okay, so you would want to look and say, okay, so authority seems to, you know, if you look from the outside. Now, who looks at the outside? That's not what we're here for, right? right? So uh, the truth is that one of the problems with Mnuchin and with some of family therapy is that there was a tendency to look from the outside more than from the inside. And um, well, over here, we're doing both. Right? And those we're always asking the question of what is the subjective experience, because subjective experience is another function. Right? In other words, uh, you would say, okay, so when, when Father says, Kiddush, what? 30 seconds, everybody's there. Right? Soldiers. That looks good for the outside. But is there room for the second son to whisper in his father's ear, we need 35 seconds? You know, because uh, someone was in the bathroom, and there's a halacha about that too, and so uh, um, maybe 40 seconds? Is there room to say that? Now, in a functioning family, <coughs> there is room to say that. It, was, <coughs> it may look like something from the outside, but if you look at the authority and you say, does authority change over time? Authority has to ch change over time, because children get big. And when they get big, the way that they, they deal with authority is somewhat different. Now, in each culture, it'll be different, right? But uh, uh, there are people uh, who were documented in the Gemara, whose way of dealing with Cuba without aim is to run away. Um, because it just couldn't happen. It was, it was impossible uh, to accept that kind of authority. So they ran away, and then it was okay. In other words, it's not, it's not a simple matter. But it, the question is, is there room for it to correct itself? Does it grow? Does it work in a way that people uh, function so that somebody can say something about something? Now, if the older boy, uh, who is, let's say, 38, <laughs> is, uh, can't say to his father, people need more than 30 seconds. It's, you know, this worked when we were five. It's a long time and it hasn't really worked. If he can't say that, so we have a problem. Right? We have something that's not functioning because that kind of communication, in order to correct itself, needs room. That you can't judge from the outside. You can only judge it from the inside. 
Okay. It's, it's maybe a different variation on these questions, but that the variations are very good. It sounds like you're saying that the ultimate uh, decider on if something is working or not is rests in the family that you're dealing with. Is what? Rests in the family. Yeah. And exactly. They decide if this is working for me. Right. I find very often that just in my own experience, when people come in and they say, I have this problem, but it has nothing to do with what I think the problem is. <coughs> so, so then they could say, well, it's working for me, but I have this problem. Right. That we're working for me, but I have a problem would mean that some things are working and some things are not. Right? In other words, you would say, okay, so the authority issue seems to be working for everybody else, but it leaves me with a sense that I'm smaller than I need to feel. And I can't become bigger in the eyes of my father, and whose eyes should I become bigger in if not my father? Why doesn't he treat me like an adult? Right? So that's not working. So some, something, some, 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 what often happens is that some uh, subsystems will work and others won't. And, uh, and then we want to look at both. A lot of times when you work with a family, the first thing you do is to say, what is working? And then after you see what is working, then you say, what's the price of what's working? Whereas if you look at them and say, what's the matter? Then they feel like we've failed. And that's the end of the therapy. Uh, because then when you say, well, what is working? You say, what's the difference? We don't do anything right. So when you would see a system that, you know, let's give the example of 30 seconds in Kiddush and it's working, a good therapist would say, this is very important for the entire family. If it's working, it means it's important for everybody. There's something about getting all together in 30 seconds for Kiddush that just is us. That's how we feel. That's, and so that's working. What might, what might be the price of it over time? The price is uh, some other dysfunction somewhere else, but you start with, uh, put it this way, when you deal with a family, you don't want to interrupt the connectedness or the feeling of, uh, of being part of something. You want the, being part of something to grow to be even better, but you don't want to begin by saying this family has failed, because then you don't have any clients. You may have some individuals who are belly aching with each other, but the family's not your client. Uh, left side for a moment. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes clients will come and in their opinion, it's working for them. Say that again? In their opinion, it's working for them. And yes. that is because they don't know any different. Mm -hmm. right. Like, I think we've got a client that I had who describes her marriage, and it sounds like just like a business contract. Okay. So, so now what we're going to do is to take apart the question that Razi asked, and that now you're putting, uh, looking at more details. So what, what, what do you mean works? Right? Mm -hmm. There are different ways of looking at working, right? And so uh, they can say, we're not giving up on this. Kids for 30 seconds, that's us. We're not giving up on it. And so you say, well, that part of it is working, right? And then uh, let's just go around to 15 of you and uh, ask how each one of you feels with the 30 second limit. Would that be okay? In other words, you know, we we'll ask uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the father, um, you know, when you say something to people, so it's something that you say to people. And so 15 kids, each of them is going to have a different feeling about it. Could we collect the different feelings? Would that, would that be a problem with, uh, with your authority? We're not changing anything. We just want to collect how it feels. And uh, if the father says, no, it doesn't interest me, we have a problem. Because that's a problem in parenting, that what my child feels doesn't interest me. Right? So then there's a, a boundary that's too, uh, too rigid. Right, between the father and the children. The boundary is only authority, but he's not able to listen to them. Now, listening to children is a parental function, right? It doesn't, uh, is anything about kibbut or aim say that you're not allowed to listen to your children, right? And the truth is, if you want to help them to respect you, you listen to them. And then they respect you more because you're somebody who's listening. You know, we talk to God, you can't talk to your parents. So, um, so he could say, okay, let's see if this can work. And then the father says, never, and then you go to David's story because you're going to find out that in his family, his father stood there for a whip, with a whip, and gave 10 seconds. And so he's post-traumatic from it. Right? He, he, can't get, he doesn't know what else to do. And he says, what are we going to have here, a balagan? We have 15 kids, and you know, we're going to have a balagan here. If, it, if we don't organize, it's going to be, is he right? Oh, he's right, on one side. So then you ask the family to figure, wait a minute, uh, let's figure out for all of you together how many seconds is good. And Father will be the one who says, ah! Oh! And then stands with a watch, but everybody's agreed on it. 
Now, if it was really working, everybody agreed on it to begin with. If it's not so much working, so then we say, well, uh, every Shabbos we're going to move by five seconds and see how it works. How would that be? You know, so, uh, and one of the older boys says, you know, I'll look at the watch. You stand with the Kiddush cup, I'll look at the watch. And, and you know, they start to create it in a way which, uh, instead of being absolute, is playful. It becomes something that they can co-create, that you can take this absurd situation that I gave you and play with it. All absurd situations are play situations. They're created from a lack of ability to, uh, to think beyond some concrete solution, but you can't simply uh, um, disavow the, the concrete solution. You have to play with it. This, this, is, yeah. this is the taking of I'm sorry. This is thinking that family sees this as a problem, but no, no, no. A lot of times you come in, you have clients that come in and do, they don't even bring up their aspect as an issue. And they come if if they don't bring it up, then it's not a problem. But it'll show up at some point. In other words, say if if the 30 seconds for Kiddush is a problem, it'll show up. I'm saying, for example, that to using that example, yeah. I might think that having a time limit on Kiddush is absurd. But if it works for them... Oh, you might think. Yeah, well, you're, then you're the problem. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying if you think that there could be a better quality to them, they have their right. run things, but it right. works for them, so does that mean it's fine to just leave it? Like, it should, right. See, I gave you an absurd situation that I can't imagine, and that 15 people in 30 seconds, that sounds a little absurd to begin with, right? But what you're saying is that, is that you're, you're getting the point. If they say, this is the only time in the week that everything works for all of us. Think of it as a dance, right? There's a family dance that happens around Kiddush. It doesn't happen any other time. Everybody's over there. We feel that we're part of things. So you say, well, that's a wonderful thing. That's a function, that we feel part of things, that we accept the authority. That's wonderful. What's the cost? Is there a cost? How do you check if there's a cost? You go and look, right? So you say, well, what's the cost? Is everybody happy with it? I'm not so happy with it. I'm not so happy with it. Well, how do we accommodate everybody? Right? So then you look into it in, the, in that way. But the therapist to say, you can't do that. What are you out of your mind? 30 seconds for kiddish, 15 kids? That can't happen. You can't do that. That's how to lose a family. Right? Because you say that's, this is important. The more absurd it is, the more important it is. We'll be getting to that when we talk about symptoms. The more absurd it is, the more important it is, and the more useful it is in the therapy, but not in a straightforward way. So, uh, um, so you don't want to say, stop doing that, except for physical violence. Physical violence will get to at some point, and obviously sexual violence. But the physical violence, there's, a, there's a, a range there. In other words, there also, if nobody's being hurt by it, now that's not you know, politically correct, is it? Right? Because a uh, father should never uh, hit a child, and there are you know, people like, I think a friend of mine told me that it's in... Rabbi Nachman, that how can you ever hit a child? How can you ever hit a child? So there's a statement there that, you know, that can't happen. But can all families stop doing it immediately because the therapist thinks that that has to stop? That's not how therapy works, right? So you say, that's one way of doing authority. How is it working? And what is, what's the cost? And if you figure out that the cost is not worth it because people, uh, this, the keyword of is not being afraid that your father's going to kill you. That's not keep it up. So, uh, um, so something is happening that's actually impinging on keep it up. It's something has replaced keep it up. Something that belongs in the area of fear and not of uh, uh, what, what anybody would call kavod. So, uh, so then you say, well, this is important, but how, can we do it better? How can the family do this function better? And then, then you use the issues of the hierarchy and the. Uh, um, uh, and the subsystems to look into the function, but all of the, all of the, uh, 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 if you read Mnuchin, they sound like absolutes. They're derivative, the derivative of the function. That's the main thing that we're trying to get to. Motion. Um, I, I guess it's a question of we do agree to this following statement. But I'm understanding from what you're saying. But, but the, the U is a plural with all of it. Go ahead. Uh, it's a question for you. Know, a question is a question. Uh, it's for the base measure, measure. It's not for the yeah. Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I think the, the, the common question being asked that if the client's not feeling, doesn't believe that 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 the boundary is a problem, even though it seems they don't recognize the role that the boundary is playing in the dysfunction. 
So then, for the client, they'll ask the client if he's okay with it. If it's functioning well, it's it's it, yes, it should be like that. So then, and then I'm not sure if this is what you, you meant to answer is that a way to test what a way to challenge a client is are they willing to look at the boundary? Which means okay. are they willing to give their do, is that true or not true? Okay. Um, so I, so Moshe has asked the question of everybody. And uh, what do you guys think? You want to talk about that? Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's when it's coming from our perspective of what, of what should be working and how things should be working, it's always going to lead to, to a place, like you said, where you're going to lose the family, it's going to, it's going to turn out unhealthy. And even if you're just coming in a challenging, sort of curious way, but if it's coming from your perspective of what should and should not work, right. that's going to be, it's going to be a place where you're sticking yourself into the therapy uh, in an unhealthy way. Right, okay. Unless you Did you want to ask about this, Kathy? Yeah, you said something about... Yeah, you want to stay with Moshe's question? Or you want to raise anything? It was part of what you said, so I don't know. Uh, that's fine. What was... You said something about a play situation. About what? A play situation, that this rigid situation could be turned into a play situation. A playful situation. A play situation. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I'll, I'll be talking about that a lot, and that connects with what you've been learning about with Barbara, but let me get, I'll be back in a minute. Um, the question that Moshe is raising is uh, the important question for the therapist, which is, who am I? Um, and we'll see as we go along, uh, but we can stop and, and put it here because you put your finger on it, um, say, what role is the family giving me? Huh? I mean, we're talking about different functions, different roles, and so what is the role of the therapist? What role are they giving me? And what you're asking, which is correct, is they may not give me the role of helping them to reconstruct the, uh, the boundaries. See, for example, the Mnuchin system, that's what you do in the room. You say, okay, so Claudia here, every time that David and Caroline are trying to talk, Claudia interrupts you with some sort of uh, uh, provocation happens over and over again, and then David and Caroline don't work. So what do you do in a Mnuchin room? You say, uh, would it be okay, Claudia, if you sit here by me, and I'm going to help you to, um, it's not going to be easy for you, and there's probably a reason for it, but I'm going to help you to stay out of it. It makes you anxious, but I'm going to help you to stay out of it. Let's see if we can help David and Caroline to talk. So what have I done? I have created a boundary, right? I have said, when you... Claudia, go into the boundary of the, let's say, parental, it may, may not be the spouse system right now, but let's say the parental system, and you keep going into it, it doesn't work. They don't reach a, a conclusion. They keep fighting with you, but they don't decide what they want to do about Don's school, right? So I'm going to reconstruct, restructure the family. I'm going to take Claudia and put her into the, uh, um, the child subsystem and leave the parental subsystem to work by itself and challenge them. And David and Caroline say, oh, we've just been waiting for somebody to do that. In other words, they cooperate. Claudia cooperates. And, uh, and when Claudia tries to get in, David or Caroline says, Claudia, please, we're talking. And then the system starts to function. Well, that's wonderful, right? All of the Venusian tapes, which are 5% of his clinical work, the others are in, were thrown away, but all of the Venusian tapes that are successful are tapes like that, you know, that you restructure the family and it works. But ask yourself, is every family going to let me do that? Let's say I say to, uh, uh, to, to Claudia, please sit by me here, and uh, um, David and Caroline are going to talk, and Caroline keeps talking to Claudia, and yelling at her. I said, but, 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 I want to put a line in it. If I thought that that's what we could, we wouldn't be here. That's not what we're here for. We're here for something else. So you see, part of the thinking about the structure is connected to the role that you have in the structure. That's a point that we'll be making over and over again, which is connected to the level of differentiation of the family. In other words, the family, we're just going to take a short leap into that sentence, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll get more into it in the future. But since you brought it up, um, when I say, well, let, let's think about the function of subsystems, and the family says, let's think about what? Tell us what to do. Fix it. Do something. We didn't come here to have you move chairs. That's not what we're here for, right? 
And you say, uh, I'm glad. here's the Mnuchin wrote 10 books that said that this works. And they say, not with us, not with us. You're, you don't have that role. So can you use the role if they don't give it to you? No role can be, can be imposed by the therapist. The therapist can offer a role, right? And so if the family can accept the role of restructuring, so you can work with them. Those are, those are the families that are easier to work with. Those are families that, that I would refer to as middle level differentiation. Those are the families that we pray are going to walk into the room because we know what to do with them. And Nusha tells us exactly what. It's pretty simple to say when you see that every time David talks to Caroline, Claudia interrupts. It's not so complicated to say, Claudia, sit with me and the two of you just talk and it put by some magic works, which means that they're giving you the role. Now, what is your role? Your role is the director of the drama, right? The family comes in with its own drama, which is written itself. You can call it a narrative if you want. It's written itself. It's being performed on the stage. And nobody knows who wrote the script. And as David suggested, maybe it was written two generations before. And uh, maybe it was written coming out of the camps, so, you know, not in the current context. And uh, nobody's redirected this script for two generations. And so he said, well, you want to let me be the director here? And they said, oh, do it. And they all accept it. You see? So they're giving the therapist the role. The, the system is now is the system of the family and the therapist it has a role for the therapist of, of redirecting things. When you're redirecting things, the structure is an easy way to think about it. It's an easy way to think about it. But if the family doesn't give you that role, then those are the tapes that Mnuchin threw out. My question was, was, was not... Was, uh, I, I took your question a little bit past. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, 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 would, I would want to ask it maybe more theoretical than as practical. It means what, what, what I understood from what you're saying is that there, there is a, um, something equals, which means a, 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 bound, a, a boundary is not functioning if it's not taking everybody that it's supposed to protect into consideration. The function right. of the subsystem. If you start helping the subsystem to right. function. Right. right. So let's say, would, 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 it, would it be a true that if a client is not willing to, 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 to question the boundary that he has, that itself says that it's not functioning. That means, no. uh, I have a client that, that says that he used to get beat up in his head, right? That, that, that's the way, that's the way, you know, they, they let them know that they weren't happy with him. And he says right away, and that's not my problem. That's fu I'm fine with that. Like, like, that's okay. So here's the boundary. So I said, do you want to look into it? No, no, no. That, that's not, that. so does that show that the boundary is not functioning? Okay, that, that's a, a useful theoretical question. Um, the division between theory and practice when you're working with people does not exist. In other words, uh, I'm just making a scientific statement, first of all. Mo Moshe said, I'm just asking a theoretical question. There are no theoretical questions. There's theoretical thinking, but about a given family, you're always involved in connecting the theory and the practice. In other words, you can only work with what works. You can only, the thinking about it will help you to say, uh, if you want to get, you know, say, okay, well, they think that hitting each other is a good idea and it doesn't bother them, and so there's a, that just shows that it's uh, not working. That won't help you, right? Because it won't help you to know what your role is with them. It will help you to know what your role is not with them. Your role is not to criticize them. Your role is not to say you're doing things wrong. Your role is to say what are you trying to do that's right, and what's the cost. So, but they're not giving you the role of saying, let's fix this this way. I'm the director here. I'm taking it upon myself to be the director of this drama. And let's play the drama a different way. See where play comes in? In a drama, dramas always play. In other words, the symptom is a group play that nobody remembers uh, what was playful about it. But at some point or other, it made the world work better. And now it's not working. Symptoms never come about uh, in a negative way. Symptoms come about in a positive but unconscious way. And the unconscious part is, what are we doing here? In other words, what is the play that we're doing? Play can't be conscious. That you learn from Barbara, the soon, as soon as you ask you know, about a doll, is that a doll or is that, uh, uh, is, is that your mother? Like you know, the, the original transitional object, the shmata, with a four-month-old baby, the baby's using the shmata like his mother. And if you say to the baby, please tell me, is that a shmata, is that your mother? So then it's no longer a useful play. 
The play is when you don't ask the question about, about reality and fantasy. You don't ask the question. That's the definition of play. So play is always fantasy. Play is always where you don't ask the question about whether it's uh, a fantasy or reality. That's a that's an Eastern kind of notion. But you know, we're we're part of the Easterners. Uh, you know, there are some questions that are. Uh, see, the idea that every question is useful is not so useful, right? Because sometimes when you keep asking questions, you make life more difficult. So if you ask, put it this way: some of you watch movies every now and then kosher movies, whatever, a movie that you're watching when it's working, you're not asking yourself, how did they make this movie, and you know, should he have casted it this way, and how come there was, the shot was long, and four seconds instead of short and five, you know, it, that just, you're not watching a movie then, you're, you're doing reality. When you're not asking that question, when you're engaged in the emotional input of it, which is obviously fantasy, it's a movie, right? But you're sitting there and it's engaging you, you're refraining from the question, is this fantasy or reality? That's how literature works, and that's how, uh, that's how play works. In the family, the family is doing something. They don't know what they're doing. They're just doing it because that's how we are. And, uh, and they say, you know, we think it's okay, which means this is us. Right? There's no such thing as okay, but it, this is part of us. We're not here to ask that. We're not giving you the, the role of saying stop it, which is not a useful to say most of the time in therapy. We're giving you a different role. What is a different role? Well, we'll get to other roles as we get along. So far, we're dealing with the easier families. That's the good place to start. Pray that you get a couple of families who walk in having read the notion, give you the role of moving the chairs and changing the, 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 uh, the, the boundaries and the, making the subsystems work, and uh, then you'll start to feel like, oh, I sat in a room with more than three people, and uh, they left better than they came in. Now I've got to go read and find out why that happened, but uh, something actually happened. That's the way to become a family therapist. It's not the way to become the final family therapist. But this is the easiest way to think about it when they give you that role. But they have to give you that role. You can't fight for the role. But you can make a reasonable effort to say, Claudia, please, this is important to me. Sit here and shut up. Right. You can do that. If it works, if it doesn't work, then you have to think of something else to do. What else to do, we'll get to, it's a more advanced question. Now, here's what we're going to do in our system. Today, uh, we're about halfway through the issue of uh, systems, which is where we, it's a structure, which is where we want to be. Next time, we'll finish this. Then you're going to have a break of four weeks where you're going to learn about uh, sort of a continuation of Barbara's course. About children, you're going to learn about child law. The law, the child in Israeli society and law. And then we'll be back to continue this course. We're going to do a section on adolescence because Barbara talked about children and we left out adolescence. So we'll do a section on adolescence, then we'll go on with family uh, theory. What we're going to do today is I'm going to give you something that somehow got lost in the, in the midterm. So um, this is what's called the course evaluation. And if you can pass them along. Um, we're going to give you. Uh, 10 or 15 minutes now to fill it out because we want them back and we didn't get them back last time so this is how we're going to get them back. Fill it out, it shouldn't take very long. Please be as honest as you can. The blog uh, in, uh, is gonna, may, may uh, undergo a TSMation here and uh, you may want to add other things in the blog. This is the time to use the blog for evaluation. This is the post Evaluation. What's that? Post our evaluation on the blog, is it? You can do, you know, you can add, yeah. You might have asked about the blog, David, right? Uh, the blog is not only David. But there is a blog. What? There's there a blog for the class, yeah. You don't know where it is? You know where it is. Do you know where it is? It's a, it's a, it it's a new heading. It's not in the course anymore. It's, a, it's what you guys asked for, which is a, a blog for your class that you can use for whatever's going on. So you can continue with the evaluations there, but please fill out this form now and put them here before you leave, because next week we'll spend some time uh, talking about what you have to say based on what, we, what you've had to write. So we'll take a few minutes for that, and then uh, we'll continue with the small groups.